uh, one night in Los Angeles while drinking and you know, having fun. Uh, he took out his hand, like, "Hey, dude, let's race to the first million dollar." <laughs> race for a million dollar. That's an aggressive race, you know. But you know what? Just because I didn't like the guy, I really took on the race, you know, seriously. Five years after we had the handshake, I think I was uh, 28. I'm like, man, now I have more than a million dollars in my bank. I think I want to call that guy. And then actually he, he, he came. I picked him up with the Range Rover, you know, nice. I was asking him, so what are you doing now, man? You know, you get that million dollar yet? He said, no. And then it made me feel good. Oh, this is what it feels like. Defeating, you know, people that you hate. So I just kept on going, you know. And I had, I had houses, I had properties, you know, and a few apartments. Oh, I counted, I had like 15 cars or something, you know. Six, seven Harleys at the time, and then just toys in my garage. And then I could buy anything I want. And then I had everything that everybody else wanted. Man, I feel like I'm on top of my world. But how come there is such a big, big fear? How do I not become afraid? And because the fear is just not pleasant. Is this really going to last forever? And then I had, I had accumulated much to the point where all I thought was just myself. had to die because of my greed. And the whole family suffered. Oh God. An old man owed me money, you know. Then he gave me a check. Check is good for next week. The following week, I took it to the bank and it bounced. I'm like, okay, promise you, promise you, next week. Promise. To see him the next week, still didn't have money. So he lied to me three times. And then there was ego talking, you know, it was not about money anymore, you know. Couldn't care less about money. But, you know, just don't do that to me. Brought my bouncer with me, you know, my hitman. I destroyed his office. And then smashing things. The guy was so scared, he was smoking, he lit up a cigarette. He was so old, fragile old and gray and bent and shaking. There I was, you know, I was still young, you know, tough. And I was so happy, you know, just his office was destroyed, you know, tables split in two and chairs, you know. I went home. Next day I found out he died, heart attack. All for $5,000. What have I become? Should have been me. I just made a promise that the rest of my life I just choose to do good things for other people. That's it. It's already a, it's a developing country, and then my village where I live is probably one of the um, underdeveloped villages. I'm not saying you have to sell your houses, your, your cars, and everything. Well, that's what I did, but I'm not, I'm not uh, imposing the values to other people. That's what I needed to do. What I'm saying is, uh, maybe there's somebody that needs to build a. Uh, whatever, you know, the houses or irrigation system or something or anything, there's a need, you know, in their village. You go out and you be the, the answer to the need.
I think the true happiness is when you uh, to start to empty yourself a little bit more and more you know, and more the next day. Giving is actually the key to happiness. We bring different values to young people that maybe that are really becoming addicted with um, selfishness. You go ask young people, say, what do you want to do in life, man? You know, oh, I want to be a doctor, I want to be a lawyer. Why? To make a lot of money. I say, I tell my children, you know, if there's time, there's money, you become doctors. When you graduate, you become anything. You go out to the villages, go help serve people who cannot repay you at all. And it gives me such satisfaction now. We have a clinic down there, you know, with the whole village, you know, we fix their teeth, we clean them up and, you know, the and then they, they come back home like, oh, I've been suffering for years. I have no money to go to doctors and everything. Now, thank God, you know, now I have you. You know, they, they're happy because of your presence, because of your service that you do. Punya keberanian, ya, untuk mempunyai keredan hati, mau belajar, menyatakan bahwa, oke, okay, saya orang muda, saya perlu belajar karena I'm not that smart, ya. Karena kita banyak perlu, we have to learn many things. Ini perlu kerendahan hati. Kenapa? Karena gini, <coughs> kamu tuh menjadi manusia tuh harus punya sesuatu yang kamu mau. Nanti nggak? Achievement. Kamu mau apa? Yes, we teach the young people to be successful and everything. But before they become successful financially, I think it's good for them to have a good foundation of morale, which is actually not about self. It's about giving to other people, empowering. Uh, being uh, beneficial to other people. Your, be uh, your presence needs to benefit other people. That's how you're going to create the balanced society. It's uh, actually contagious. When you go inspire somebody else, they become inspired, they want to do something else. Why is it really important? Well, because there's so much suffering in this world. Because everybody serves themselves. Selflessness is really the key. The fear, it's not there anymore. Yeah, there's really nothing to be afraid of. You know, Ten years ago, and beyond, happiness can only be defined by the feeling of having something that nobody else has. That was my happiness. You know? Winning the race in life. It's it's completely opposite. It's towards um, fulfilling somebody else's dream. Apa itu di dalam makanan ya? Ini. The togetherness and doing something different, you know, for other people really is the the uh, what going to unite your family even more. a simpler life.